hi there, I'm Harry, and I am so sorry for making this video. Like, words cannot express to you just how truly sorry I am. Nobody wants this. I don't want it, you don't want it. It's just going to be a disaster on all fronts. But, I don't know, I just feel compelled to make this video. There's like a, a spiritual force pushing me on. Like, some kind of... I don't know, like some kind of blue bird? So why do we play difficult games? Well, I don't know your reasons, but for me, I find a game's difficulty is largely associated with, hold for surprise, a game's story. Like, okay, I'm not talking about what happens in the game beat by beat. I'm not talking about dragging a child across America. I'm talking about what you do in the game, what the task is, the thing that you can sum up in a sentence. A great example of this is in Celeste. Celeste is a platformer that is notoriously difficult because, well, you're climbing a mountain. Like, have you, have you seen a mountain? Do you know how many early access games you need to sell to be able to climb one? Repelling an alien invasion escaping from the underworld, climbing another mountain. Again, it's, it's a different mountain. It's made out of like random stuff. These are all challenges laid out before you that would be trivial without difficulty. If you breezed through it, it just wouldn't feel as satisfying. Difficulty is not something that exists in isolation. You don't play a game because it's difficult. Games challenge is always part of some bigger picture. Also, and like I feel really dumb for pointing this out, it's pretty obvious, difficulty describes a relationship between a player and a game. It is not a static property of the game itself. Thanks, Maddie Thorson, developer of Celeste, for this tweet. So, what does that actually mean? Good question. It means two things. The first is really obvious in that people have varying skills when it comes to pushing buttons on a controller, and this can be for a variety of different reasons. Player A may have an easier time playing a video game in comparison to player B. Oh god, I'm, I am really breaking new ground here. What's next? Okay, Are video games art? Uh, do video games need to be fun? The second is a bit more complicated. For this, I'm going to have to talk about a recently released difficult video game that's been generating a bit of buzz right now. That's right, I am of course talking about Sifu. Sifu can be best described as the hallway fight scene in Daredevil turned into a video game. And yeah, don't worry, there's literally a hallway scene. Like, if I'm about selling you on games and I do think this game is really good and you should play it, then watch this. The thing is, this footage was taken long after I passed this part of the game, so I made it look effortless. With Sifu, you have to earn it. Which is a fancy way of saying it's hard. It's really difficult. You fall in a few unblocked hits, and when you do fall, something very interesting happens. You impress me, little girl. When you die in Sifu, you can come back exactly where you fell, with a year added on and a plus one added to the death counter. Die a few more times and you'll quickly find yourself snowballing to seniority. An entire lifetime passed in a few minutes. Now I obviously don't like that, and there's a lot that we can read into here about the lament of having the experience to achieve what you want in life but not the time. I'm at that weird limbo age now where there are like adults that are younger than me but I'm still a small child. This terrifies me. I am not dealing with this. I am going to cheat the system. I am going to beat time itself. Every time I would die in Sifu, I wouldn't come back to life. I would start the entire level again. Now. 
Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm creating a challenge for myself. I'm taking a game that is already difficult and making it even more difficult. In order to beat this self-imposed challenge, I was going to have to get good. I was going to have to get really good at this game, way better than I would normally get at video games. It didn't help that I don't play beat-em-ups. I've not played um, Bayonetta or um, the other one. This was all completely new to me. I had to memorise combos and attack patterns and where the best weapons and routes were in each level. But beyond that, I learned more about the game. I knew exactly what to do in each situation because I had played so much. Like, say in this part, I need to quickly beat this guy up and then push this guy into the railing so he takes more damage and then kill him so then I can focus on the more challenging enemy. And all of a sudden, I sound like a lunatic. What am I talking about? Like, oh yeah, it's best not to perform takedowns on certain powerful enemies because then they go yellow and transform into super super powerful guys that are difficult to deal with and like, yeah, okay, okay, cool, whatever. So what's going on here? Well, my relationship with the game's difficulty is changing. Little by little, bit by bit, I am finding the game slightly easier, which is good because I had to play a bunch of this game in order to record footage for this and like I need to look like I know what I'm doing. I feel like we don't really talk about this much, like I have... <coughs> I was in Dota 2, but I didn't start out as a slightly above average player striding confidently onto the map like a baby horse emerging from the womb. No, I start out feeling hopeless and then I press more buttons over time and I feel less hopeless because I'm getting better at the game. The important thing here for designers is to not make the player feel too hopeless because then they'll just give up and play something else like, um, like Project Triangle Strategy, that game's coming out soon. If you're actually, you'll probably be out by the time uh, you're watching this. That's insane. There are too many games out right now. Not to mention that other huge game that came out in February this year. I'm talking about Oli Oli World, of course. Okay, it's time for the big question. Here it comes. Okay, are you ready? Should Sifu have an easy mode? Stupid question. Okay, I don't like this question because I think if you're discussing this with like the the average capital G gamer crowd, they take the should as you stamping on the developer's artistic vision and forcing them to change it when like you're just giving an opinion. And like, I'm not really sure if I want to answer this question. Let me ask you another question instead. Do you trust that an easy mode in your game will be used for the purpose of giving a less skilled player an overall better experience at the risk of it not doing that and the player missing out on what the game is going for. That's it, I think that's all there is to this question. Do you trust the player? Put in an easy mode. Do you not? Well, don't. But if you don't think your game should have an easy mode, if you don't trust the player to not miss out on the intended experience, then I'd love to know your thoughts on speedrunning, where glitches are often required to complete the game as fast as possible. I'd love to know your thoughts on Settled and his 5,000 hour journey locked to one of RuneScape's most hostile areas. Surely he's not getting the intended experience there either. What about competitive Super Smash Brothers Melee? Do you like watching Melee? Well, I hate to break it to you, but players in Melee play with items turned off. Are you against competitive Melee? Man, I wonder why the intended experience argument only seems to come up with difficulty. Don't answer that, I already know. Regardless of this easy mode or not, I am of the opinion that every game out there should have... Wait for it... Accessibility options. Yeah, big, big statement there. What a, what a surprise. Here's the thing. My wrists hurt. In Sifu, you have to parry a lot with very precise timings, and you have to parry with the left bumper. This thing actually messed up my wrists. It made my wrists hurt. I never really had this before. I was experiencing an acute disability while playing a video game, and it sucked. I wanted to play Sifu, but I couldn't. I didn't for a few days. An easy mode would not have helped me here. It wouldn't have made it easier for me to play the game. What I needed was not a different difficulty setting, but accessibility options. I needed an assist mode. What I wanted was to change the timing for parrying so I didn't have to press the parry button so quickly. And that's it. And in a similar vein, someone else might need to be able to slow down the game a bit, to be able to reset the death counter whenever they like and have infinite lives. The goal here should be to make the game more accessible to people who struggle to play the game in the same way that able-bodied people can. Uh, by the way, I managed to um, alleviate my issues with this. Um, by switching controllers, right? The Xbox Series controller sucks 
ass. I have no idea what happened. Like, I don't know how Microsoft have such a good reputation when it comes to controllers when they made one good one, and how Sony seemed to get a bad rep for making one bad one. Like, this controller sucks, man. There's no easy way of saying it. It's too big, the D-pad sucks, the triggers feel flimsy, and these bumpers right here, these bumpers are the enemy. They are so bad. They are unbelievably bad. I just switched to a PlayStation 4 controller and it's great. There's like an actual button here where this bumper is. I can click it and press it and it works. Yeah, no more wrist pain. I'd also like to point out that Sifu does let you rebind the controls, which is cool, but also the face buttons are kind of locked down. Like you probably don't want Parry to replace those. There's not much you can really do. It's still cool that you can do it and I don't want to be out here painting Sifu as this game that's awful when it comes to accessibility. There are some good features included. So yeah, hopefully none of this is uh, groundbreaking to you. Like I've not made you go, ah, yes, this is amazing. I've never thought of this before. And a lot of the minds of the Capital G gamer crowd probably aren't going to be changed by an idiot like me talking into a microphone for 10 minutes, but you never know. Okay, so what do we take away from this? Um, make difficult games if you want, that's fine, obviously. Uh, if you like, put difficulty modes into your game. Um, but more importantly, I would put accessibility options into your game, as many as you can. Okay, basically what I'm trying to say is... Um, is that you should be able to pause an Elden Ring. It's so stupid. It's literally been 10 years, right? And like, if I get a phone call, I'm fucked. There's nothing else I can do. I just have to sit there and die. Also, right, some of the animations in the boss fights are terrible. Like the, um, the man with the, the, the stick, like Market or whatever, you won't be able to see footage because I already beat him. So it's just going to be me like shadow boxing him. Basically, all of his attacks are wound up and clearly telegraphed. And then he just sort of like sits there for 30 years, presumably deciding what he's going to have for dinner. And then like half a nanosecond later, he attacks you and you die. It's terrible and I hate it. Seven out of ten. Um, hello. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that <laughs> as much as I did. <laughs> if you want more, you can, um, do the things that you do whenever you want to see more from someone. <laughs> the YouTube things, subscribing, liking the video, <laughs> hitting the bell. <laughs> also thanks to Questing Refuge and Aranok for reading some of the accessibility parts of the script. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, Questing Refuge has recently made a video on Loki, which is cool because like Loki was the only Marvel TV show that I actually liked. It's a great video, you should watch it. Aranok recently finished a behemoth of a video on the um, the inherent transness of the Matrix, which is very cool. I've not even seen the Matrix, but I managed to follow along. It's great. I will um, link both of these videos below. Anyway, that's all for now. Goodbye.